refraction. Refraction of two colors of light that are traveling through a rectangle made of glass. We're looking uh, top down on the system here. So incoming ray 68 degrees away from the normal. And there's going to be separation of the colors inside the glass. And also it'll continue on the outside of the glass on the far side. But in dealing with refraction calculations, we use Snell's Law. There's a medium 1 and index of refraction 1 in medium 1 times the sine of theta 1. Theta is measured from the ray to the normal or from the normal to the ray. And in our second medium, the multiplication to n2 sine theta 2 will turn out to be equal to n1 sine theta 1. So I'm going to call this uh, medium 1. And in the air, index refraction is 1. n2 is here. And the indices of refraction numbers are different. For red, it's 1.56. For blue, it's 1.578. This index of refraction tells us how much the speed of light has changed. Light travels slower in a uh, piece of glass than it does in a vacuum. Light travels slower in water than it does in a vacuum. And we're not going to go into it much in this video, but this index of refraction number is equal to the speed of light divided by the speed of light in the medium. And the speed of light in the vacuum is the larger number. The speed of light in the medium is a smaller number. So we get an index of refraction greater than 1. Air is slightly greater than 1. We're just going to approximate and say it's equal to 1. Now let's do some calculations for the red beam first. For the case of the red light, I have 68 degrees for theta 1. And n1 is 1. So we can go ahead and uh, do the left side. For the red light, our index of refraction is 1.56 in the glass. So this is medium 2 in the glass. And we can calculate the value of uh, theta 2. First, we would evaluate sine of 68 degrees and then divide by 1.56. When you do that, on your calculator, you should have 0.5943 equals sine of theta 2. To find the value of theta 2, you take the inverse sine of both sides. Inverse sine, this does not mean 1 over sine. It's a function, a special function. You can find it on your calculator. And we take a uh, the inverse sine of this number, 0.5943. When I take inverse sine of the sine function, those two functions cancel. And we just get theta 2 over on the right. This is the only time we'll go into this much detail on calculating with the inverse sine. But you take that, and I've rounded off here, but 36.47 degrees. Make sure you're in degree mode. So that's theta 2. That's the red light. And that's the angle away from the normal. Um, for the blue, we would have the following situation. For the only thing that changes is the index of refraction. For the blue, we have one index of refraction of air, sine of 68 degrees, equals now 1.578. And sine of theta 2, the angle in the glass, away from the normal. So evaluate the sine of 68 degrees, divide by 1.578, and you get 58.5857. is the sine of theta 2. Take inverse sine of both sides, and you come up with uh, this theta 2 being 35.98 degrees. Notice they're a little bit different. Blue light is bent more than red light. The index of refraction for blue light is higher. There's more interaction between the blue light and the glass molecules than there is between red light and the glass molecules. Um, so there's our uh, relationship for for those. I might ask you, which uh, for which color is the speed of light greater in glass, blue or red? In a vacuum, the speed is the same for both colors. Well, this has the higher index of refraction. 
a high index refraction results when this denominator is smaller. The, the blue light travels more slowly than the red light. Now, our, if you've been reading while I've been talking here, we're going seven centimeters in this rectangle from uh, top to bottom. And the question really is, what is the delta x? How far apart do these beams exit the, uh, the rectangle? Well, to do that, I'm going to do that calculation. I'm going to calculate x twice. X is going to be the distance from this corner of the right triangle to each position where the ray is left. What trig function do you think will help in that calculation? Theta 2 is the angle from the normal to the ray. There's going to be different uh, x's for each triangle. What trig function do you think we should use? Well, we've got 7 centimeters over here. We don't know the length of the hypotenuse. We want to know the opposite side to the angle. We know the value of the adjacent side is 7. So it is the tangent function. So for the case of the red light, tangent of 36.47 degrees is equal to opposite x sub b for blue, I'm sorry, x sub r for red divided by the 7 centimeters. I don't need to change this to meters. We'll get x in units of centimeters. So take tangent of 36.47 degrees, <coughs> multiply by 7, and the x for the red light, 5.174 centimeters. Do the same process for the blue light. For the blue light, it's going to be the tangent of 35.98 degrees equals x sub blue over 7 centimeters. And we find x sub blue, do you think it's going to be larger or smaller than 5.174? The blue beam is there. The red beam is this outer one. So x should come out smaller, and on your calculator, hopefully you will get 5.083 centimeters. So delta x, I just need to subtract these two numbers. Um, 5.174 centimeters minus 5.083 centimeters. And when you do that subtraction, you find 0.091 centimeters, so about one millimeter apart. If you create this uh, situation in a laboratory, if you can get 68 degrees between the angle of the ray, incoming ray and the normal, if you have a block of glass where these indices of refraction are uh, the correct values, then your two beams are going to be about a millimeter um, apart from each other, 0.1 centimeters. Rough calculation. That's the delta x. Now, this question doesn't ask for it, but let's calculate what's the angle of the blue light and the red light outside of the rectangle. As these beams exit the rectangle, what's the, out, what's the angle back in air? So we've got air on this side, glass here, and then air again as the light uh, exits the rectangle. How do we calculate that? Again, we'd use Snell's Law. Now we're starting in the glass. So for the red, <coughs> using Snell's Law, I use the index refraction for red light in the glass, 1.56. I take the sine of the angle when we're inside um, the glass, and maybe I should just quickly do that here, I'll show you what's happening. We have a normal here. We need this angle. This normal and this normal are parallel to each other, a standard rectangle, 90 degrees at each corner. <clears throat> so the normal here, the normal here are parallel to each other. We've got a straight line that cuts through them. Though the angle here is the same as the angle down there. So 36.47 degrees. And that equals then in the air, I'm going to call this status of air on how the red light will exit. And if you multiply these, I think these are the correct numbers. And you get theta air of roughly 68 degrees if you round off just a little bit. This angle is not perfect. Um, 
For the blue light, we have to use index refraction for the blue light. I'm sorry, I'm off screen here. For the red light, index refraction of the red light, sine of 36.47 degrees. That's the angle of the red light away from the normal on this exit side of the rectangle. 1 times sine of theta. Divide, take the sine, multiply by 1.56, divide by 1, you get this number. Inverse sine of both sides, and you get 68 degrees. That's the angle of the red light in air away from its normal. For blue, the index refraction 1.578. The angle of the blue light to its normal in the rectangle, inside the glass of the rectangle, 35.98 degrees. Again, in air, the index refraction is 1 for the blue light, just as for the red light. Uh, it's slightly different one, but it's so little of a difference that um, we, we ignore that difference. So sine of theta in the air for the blue light. And if you work this out again, you'll get 68 degrees. So these two beams of light, um, they have the same direction as the incoming beam. It comes in 68 degrees away from the normal, and the light leaves this rectangle 68 degrees away from the normal. Um, but it's shifted a little bit, where this light is coming across like this. On the exit, they're going to come across like this. So the light gets shifted, translated back to the left a little bit, but the basic direction remains the same, 68 degrees. So you ought to uh, practice with that on your calculator. I hope I had enough in view here. You could follow the steps. Snell's law is used. Index refraction of air is 1. Index refraction of the glass is different for the red and the blue light. We calculate a theta in the glass for the red and for the blue. We use the tangent function, knowing that we have 7 centimeters in this right triangle here. We use 7 centimeters for the adjacent side to the angle, and the opposite side is what we're calculating in the x. We subtracted the two x values for the red and the blue, and that's our separation of the two beams. And then well, a little further than the problem posed, I calculated the angle of the rays for both red and blue out in air. They're back to both 68 degrees. They will not be on top of each other. They'll be, there'll be a distance in between them. They'll be separated, but they will be both 68 degrees away from the normal in the air. Okay, keep practicing.